So I only became aware of this uh, today, in fact, this morning. For a few days now, we've been aware that um, Nana Bidia too has sent to the president's executive secretary uh, has been in a hospital in the, in the United States. We've been aware of that. Yesterday, there was an update from Jubilee House um, uh, claiming that he, he was in stable condition. But I've noticed the commentary, and in fact, that's what I'm saying I noticed today. The commentary from people who were hearing the news for the first time that Nana Bidia to Asante was not well. People wishing him dead. I, I mean, okay, look. The so, comments. So some, I think someone said, um, look, um, let's pray for him. And somebody's response was, what kind of prayer? Mm. We stopped praying for ourselves and used the energy to pray for him. Please, let those who benefit from him do their prayer. We dear, we watch on. We pray it is poisoning so that he dies a painful death. Come on! Yeah. Uh, I mean, look, I, I think we need to start we need to understand the value of human life. I think it is the fundamental of, fundamental uh, building block of our major problem as a people. We don't value human life. And because we don't place a high value on human life, we behave in a certain way that is detrimental to our own lives. I mean, Galamse is an example. If we valued human life, people would not be arguing about votes instead of wanting to stop Galamse. But it's the same thing manifesting itself here. Because we don't value human life. So somebody's father, uh -huh. husband. somebody's husband yeah. is sick. Uh -huh. And we are taking it for sport. I mean, have you never had a loved one sick before? Yeah. Oh, no. We have to elevate the standard a little bit, Ghana. We have to elevate the standard. We can we can debate politics. We can talk. look if somebody commits a crime, we can prosecute them. This these are all within the the remit of civilization. But some wishing someone's death is not. It's not. Let's draw the line. I beg. It appears, and I have also seen all these comments very distasteful. And for a second, I was really, let's see, I was very worried. It's a sign that we have deteriorated and a lot of bitter people are expressing it in so many other ways. But but not, not long ago, we used to be a bit more different than this. We used to draw the line somewhere that, oh, the person is not well. In my hometown, they say that even chiefs, when they are showing the oath of office, they are some situations of sickness. Because you cannot be, be sitting here, you feel you are okay. The next few minutes, we are rushing you to the hospital. The expectation is that everybody will wish you well. Even if you may not like the person. So, well, I mean, see, we need to get back to the times where fellow feeling was part of being Ghanaian. You see, um, I agree with all of you, what you've said. The fact, I mean, you wouldn't even wish your worst enemy dead. Yeah. But you see, at this point also, it's time for us to develop soul searching. Why would people jubilate over somebody's death? Some for those who actually wish that he's alive, some have actually said, Oh, he should live. So that if the NPP loses the elections, he will be tried. Listen to this. When you go into public office, you're in that office to serve the interest of the people. What the people are saying today, as much as I don't agree with them, because you don't have to wish, I mean, that somebody would die. In, I, mean, I think that our leaders should begin to look, search through themselves and ask themselves, are we really doing what the people want? Are we doing what the people like? Are we doing what they voted for us to do? Because at the end of it all, that is why you got into politics, and that is how come you decided to say. <coughs> but having said that, me, I don't wish anybody evil. It's not even my worst enemy. 